On the left hand side of the canvas page, we have the design flow panel, and in the middle, we have our flow plan. For navigation of the design flow panel on the left hand side and several other editors, move on to the next pane by clicking on it or clicking next in the current pane. The user can also click on the header of the open pane to collapse it. Canvas tools. The canvas tools allow the user to manipulate the design's physical layout, select units for inspection and edits, and make connections. Please be aware of that if you want to make some changes or make connections manually to your topology, then you would need to use the canvas tool. Setup pane is to configure the design's die properties and design constraints by inputting the desired values and clicking update for each section. For each of these forms, there exists a reset to default button, which will do just that. We set all values to their default. However, the user will still need to click update for those values to be updated. The cancel button will reset the form input values back to the latest saved values. High level specification. All shapes inside the floor plan element palette are draggable. To add a block, drag the blue box labeled IP block from the panel onto the die area. To add designs interfaces, drag them onto the IP block located in the die area. To run the high level specification design rule check, click the run high level specification design rule button. To delete any microarchitecture, click on the delete microarchitecture button. To run the NOC synthesis engine, click on the run NOC synthesis engine button. If the user opts to define the microarchitecture manually, they will need to proceed to the next step without running the NOC SC. Otherwise, the user may proceed and update the generated design or move onto the build. Microarchitecture pane. To restart the microarchitecture design, click the delete microarchitecture button followed by the infer microarchitecture button. This will remove the current microarchitecture and populate the microarchitecture palette with needed microarchitecture instances. If the user opted not to run the NOCSC, then upon navigation to the microarchitecture pane, the microarchitecture instances will be generated and available in palette. All shapes inside the microarchitecture palette are draggable. To place microarchitecture instances, drag them onto the canvas to the desired location. Each time an instance is dropped on the die successfully, the corresponding property editor will be opened. To add connections between instances, select the connector tool in the canvas tools pane, then click an instance to start the connection and click on another instance to end the connection. The user can cancel the connection after starting by pressing ESC key. The connections are directional and this direction is indicated by the arrowhead. Once you're done configuring your topology, click Next. Analysis Tools pane. The Analysis Tools are a set of tools to analyze the design's routes, CERDES, deadlock potential, PCDC properties, and prune design. You can run these tools after configuring your topology to make sure that there is no error in your topology. Components and instances are added to the canvas from the palette. Connections are made using the connection canvas tool. Depending on which canvas tool is selected, the user is able to perform certain actions. The red rectangle marks the die boundaries and no instance are allowed to be placed either wholly or partially outside it. The user can also use the mouse wheel for zooming in and out and use the middle button on panning. On the right hand side of the screen, an expandable side panel is available. We will explain the features of the side panel now. It is expanded by clicking here on the top right of the screen. When the side panel is expanded, the icon changes to an X and this can be used to collapse the side panel. 
The connection type that we are seeing on the floor plan is determined by the visible network selected in the canvas visualizations pane at the top of the right hand side bar. At the moment, we are seeing the data connections. If I click config, we can see how our config network is configured. For the NI tower, we don't have any error network present. When a user selects a component on the floor plan using one of the pointer tools, its corresponding property editor is opened. Each of the component's attributes is present and may be updated by entering the desired values by clicking Update. Each attribute type is presented in its own pane and can be expanded, collapsed by clicking on the pan header. Root Editor The Root Editor tab allows users to view the paths defined for each network type and assign update routes for each. There's a tab corresponding to each available network. A table of the paths defined on the paths page allows the user to click on a row and see the routes assigned if any potential route candidates, if any. By clicking on the root option in the list of nodes, routes are shown. To assign a route, click on the radio button next to the desired route option. Once a route is assigned, the user can add channels by clicking on the Add Channels button next to the instance in the node for selected route section. This will reveal the duplicate links editor below nodes where the user can select read, write, request response channels desired and then click update. The instance view tab provides to the user a way to review all the units of a design in tabular format and a way to filter and search for a specific instance. It is here also where the user can define and edit logical groups. In the All Interfaces section, here the user is presented with multiple tables to view all the design's interfaces, instances, unassociated interfaces, and blocks. In the Instance table, the user has option to filter the table by instance name and type. Clicking on a row in any of these tables will navigate the user to corresponding property editor. We can also filter the instance list by type and can search by name. Unplaced instances. Any instances which are defined by the design but do not have a physical location information can be found here. To assign a physical location, click on the table row and the corresponding property editor will be opened. Once there, the user is able to enter the desired physical information and click update. Unassociated interfaces. Any interface which has physical location information but has not been associated with the block is listed in this table. The table allows for the user to select which of the existing blocks they want to associate the interface to. The user can associate the interface by selecting the desired block from the drop-down list on the interfaces table row. Alternatively, the user can associate and disassociate interfaces from a block using the blockage property editor. Next tab we have is the logical groups. In the logical groups tab, you can add, remove and update the logical groups. To add a group, click on the add group button and either use the auto-generated unique name or enter a new name. With at least one logical group available, the user can scroll through the provided list of instance and assign each to a group by selecting the desired group from drop-down list provided. To clear the instance from a group, select the clear option in the drop-down. To remove a group, click the trash can icon next to the group name. Stripe groups. The stripe groups are listed in the table here, but in order to add, edit, or remove a stripe group, the user will need to visit the Interfaces tab. Test and Report page. On the left-hand side of the Test and Reports page, the user can run the high-level specification and microarchitecture design rule checks. The current status is indicated by the series of icons. If it's successful, it will be green circle with a check mark. If it's required, amber triangle with the explanation point, and if there's error, it will be red octagon with an X. Click on the high-level specification 
or microarchitecture button to run the corresponding design rule checking tests. Under the DRC buttons is a section for running report test scripts. The user is provided with a list of scripts to generate reports based on the current design configuration. The user selects the desired script from the drop-down list and clicks run. The script is run and the output is printed below. Click on the open output link to see the results. Here in the browser we can see the area report for the NI Tower component. Similarly, we can run all the other reports and they also create these report files you can open in the browser. The user can also write their own custom reports using the Interconnect Architect APIs. The rest of the test and report page is dedicated to view logger file output. The user selects the desired log file to view from the dropdown at the top of the section and the corresponding output is displayed below. Once the design is passing all the DRC tests, it is ready to be used to generate RTL. This page provides the user with the information of the build path and button to generate RTL. To generate the RTL, click on the Generate RTL button and wait for the results. The status of the build is displayed in the button after a run is complete. The last tab of the Interconnect Architecture is the Docs section. The documentation that is linked in the user interface consists a lot of getting started guides and how you can use the user interface to configure the NOCs and CMNs in the Interconnect Architecture tool. And also it explains various parts of the user interface and it also covers the APIs. On top of this, there's a lot of resources you can find in the documentation tab. Also, support tab shows how you can contact ARM support. Regarding the APIs, this interconnect tooling is built around the package of Python APIs for loading, manipulating, testing, and saving configurations in the YAML format. These APIs are used by the user interface, but they can also be used directly in the Python scripts to perform many different tasks, including iterating through aspects of configuration for analysis and reporting making targeted pragmatic changes across specific aspects of the configuration, scripted construction of an interconnect, which can be version controlled, modified, and rerun. We have API documentation for everything and example script for each IP that you can configure using the interconnect architect.